This took way too long to get set up. Sorry? I've been here for 38 minutes. I had to shower. I'm sorry. Just two quick showers. <sighs> the shower itself can be fast, but then I have to get ready for the podcast also then after that. So it's, you know, it's harder for me than it is for you. I have to be pretty. This doesn't just happen. I <laughs> know it doesn't just happen. Okay, I'm seeing the stream. Okay, we I'm going to go there. then, okay? Okay. Here we go. All right, guys. You get those guys get over there. You get over here. You do one of these things. You go over there. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Allison. So we should make it an announcer. This this show is going to be a little stilted because we're going to go a few minutes here. I have Alice to pop is... out in like twenty minutes. I'm making a conversational where we both talk. Oh, okay, okay. Because I <laughs> thought I was making an announcement. Okay, okay. I'll shut up. It's fine. Hey, Alice is going to pop out, deliver our son to a place, and then pop right back in. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um. If, well, impeachment is on, Allison. Mm hmm. Well, big stuff, bro. I know. Impeachment. Impeachment is on. Uh, Do you think they're going to, when the House impeaches Biden 17 times for all the stupid stuff he's done, do you think there are going to be breathless newscasts where they go, this historic number of impeachments. Biden is now the most impeached president in American history. The way they did about Trump when Trump was impeached two times and it didn't go anywhere? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. I, and I don't think they're going to be very soberly going to a wine bar and reading over the case against him and saying, you know what, you couldn't see this coming, but I've come up with the feeling that Trump was guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. Could have gone either <laughs> way, though. That not only is the committee not allowing Hunter Biden to testify publicly, but they have not called a single witness, a single first-hand witness to any of their allegations. They haven't allowed anybody to testify publicly because they do not have a single witness to any of their alleged uh, allegations. They don't. Not so obviously th they've got Bob Alinsky, Devin Archer, and some other folks, the, the FBI guys, the whistleblowers mm -hmm. as well. So uh, yeah, they'll have all sorts of people. So yeah, and in Hunter's thing where he talked outside the building, he said that um, his dad was not financially involved in any of his business dealings, which is a I new phrase. Let me state as clearly as I can. My father was not financially involved in my business. I am here. So uh, do you see that the New York Times switched that? They doctored up and said, I am here, Mr. Biden said. Let me make, state this as clearly as I can. My father was not involved in my business. Of course, they doctored it up because that's what they've all been saying all along is that Biden had nothing to do with the business. He never talked to anybody. Yes. Oh, except a bunch of times. But they only talked about the weather. Oh, except. And so now they've gone to not he wasn't involved, but Hunter is very carefully, I'm sure, in careful consideration with his lawyers saying that he was not financially involved in his business, which I assume is also the goalposts are probably going to move again here at some point. I don't think we're done moving goalposts, but that's what yeah. we're doing. And you see AOC, there were no witnesses to any of these alleged that. Well, right. I mean, except for all the people who are saying Biden talked to all his business people, except for the FBI um, source who told them that, you know, the Bidens were involved in this business dealing in Ukraine, except, you know, there are witnesses. You could, might believe them or not believe them or whatever, but there are witnesses saying that this stuff happened. Yes, Bob but, has been around f for four years. Okay, but yeah, you don't have Biden on video saying this is going to be like the new thing. You don't have Biden on video saying, yes, I will use my power as vice president of the United States and pull strings for you in exchange for this large sum of money, which is going to personally benefit me. Like, yeah, you don't have that on video right now. And even if you did, I'm sure there would be some other reason why that's not actually anything The ones who are dirtbags, who are cynical dirtbags, mm -hmm. who should burn in hell like Adam Schiff. Uh, I mind less than the ones who actually really have no memory of what they did to Trump and can't believe this, have never thought 
I know. while they were doing this Can you this believe Trump? somebody would impeach a president? It's existential. <laughs> and right now, we know that they are continually trying to tear us down from within. When we swore our oath, we swore our oath to protect against enemies. This is Democratic Rep. Jasmine Crockett. Means foreign and domestic. And let me tell you something. Those of us that serve on oversight, especially those of us that are specifically Democrats, I feel like we are constantly fighting domestic enemies. And no one should feel that way. The American people should be outraged right now. Outraged. And yeah, I'm not outraged. I'm, no. um, I'm all for it. Biden's the worst president of my lifetime and up there with Carter, probably, who's outside of my lifetime. But it, he should be impeached 20 times. I don't even yes. care. I, I can think of a million reasons why he should be impeached. It's absurd that he hasn't been impeached yet. They should do this all day until the election. So I was in a group chat today with some of my conservative buddies, and we were all talking about whether or not Biden's going to be actually on the ballot next november mm -hmm. and i don't know how you feel about this but my thought is they're going to wait to the convention and try and swap him out right that has been something that we have floated. yeah now i didn't realize because i was then looking up the dates of the convention do you realize how late the democratic convention is this year august it's like august 19th Mm, yeah, that is so late. it's only like two and a half months before the actual election. Can you imagine if so they stick somebody... So is the Republicans somebody... a week before? No, the Republicans are in July, like normal. <laughs> so, but imagine if they put in a totally new person two and a half months before the election. Well, uh, yeah, but don't you think that's designed to keep to keep Biden inside for as long as possible? Well, yeah, so that there's as little time as possible to vet a new person. Well, no, that's not what I was thinking. I was just oh. thinking that the campaign wants him to stay inside the White House and to oh. not have to go out there and do town halls and stuff. They don't want him to – because he doesn't really have to start campaigning mm -hmm. until the general. Right, right. And I think that's the plan because you don't want – it's really too late at this point in terms of ballot access and stuff – to have a real primary now. I mean, they've already canceled the primaries in some states. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're passing deadlines to get on ballots in some of these states, too. So there's really not a way to have a real race at this point for a, a primary election on the Democrat side. So I think at this point, they just, like you're saying, hide Biden away for the next, realistically, eight months. And, you know... Then in August, right before the convention, have him go, you know, actually, like, my health and my family or this and that. If they don't just, you know, have him accidentally disappear from right. public through some accident or whatever. But, you know, they could have him resign out of there and stuff. And and then and then I... Don't know exactly how this works because I don't know that this ever, has ever happened where a person who has all the pledged delegates would not be able, would go away from being in contention in the convention. Does then just, I would assume every delegate can just vote for who they want? Yeah, well, can't every delegate kind of vote for who they want regardless? Not on the but first ballot. Pledge. Oh. Not on the first ballot. They're pledged by the party rules, though. Oh, I see. So on the first ballot, they have to vote for the person that they're pledged for. It's then typically on a second ballot, if nobody has a majority of the votes, that they would be released. This is KJP. <laughs> I, look, um, I don't have anything else to add. The president was familiar with what um, Hunter was going to say today. Uh, and... Uh, you know, uh, look, he's proud of his son. He and the First Lady are proud of his son, how he's rebuilding his life back. He's going to focus on what is needed on the American people. Hunter, and I've said this many times, is a private citizen. And so certainly I would have to refer you to, um, uh, to his representatives. I'm just not going to get into private conversations because what you're asking me is actually a private conversation. I'm just not going to. Might as well. Yeah. Seriously, somebody brings up a great point in the chat. Charm School in the chat says early voting starts two months before Election Day, which is true. Oh, that's interesting. In a lot of states, there are going to be people able to vote like a month Wouldn't after. Wouldn't that be interesting <laughs> if a bunch of Biden votes got banked? Wouldn't that be, and he was out? Oh, yeah. my God, that would be, you know, the Democrats would try to intervene. 
<laughs> they would say, no, we can't do this. We can't. Oh, it would be so. Please let it happen. Please. I asked for so little. First briefing since Hunter was indicted again in Los Angeles. Why doesn't President Biden just pardon him? President, I've been very clear. The president's not going to pardon and him. One... Yeah. We'll see about that. We'll see about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll see. If Hunter gets threatened with jail time, is he really not going to pardon him? Of course he's going to pardon him, obviously. I mean, that could be the thing that they do, right? Is they could That's say, the like, well, he pardons Hunter, but then he steps down because he knows it's sort of out of bounds. You right. know what I mean? He says, like, I'm going to do this, but then I'm going to go away. That's it. About these, uh, this Ukraine money for border policy uh, negotiations. In the last 24 hours, 10,000 illegal border crossings, southwest border. Would you admit that the border policy, the Biden border policy so far, has not worked? What I will say is that we have known for decades, for decades, that the immigration policy is, the immigration system is broken. We've said that over and over again. That has been Republican administration and Democrat administration. That is not unheard of. That is what we have seen for the past couple of decades. The, pre wait, the president has put forth an immig immigration, a comprehensive immigration policy legislation uh, on his first day to deal with this issue. Republicans refuse. They refuse to deal with this issue. It's been not a almost good three answer. years since he put forth that, that legislation. So we're going to do... He had Democrats when he first got into office. Did he right. not? Yes, of course he did. And, you know, Trump had Republicans and didn't have these problems with the border. Um, it, it, so saying Republicans didn't deal with this issue when it worked under the Republicans, they can say this until they're blue in the face, but... The only problems at the border happen during Democrat presidencies. So they can go Trump's fault, Trump's fault, Trump's fault, Trump's fault. But the only time you have photos coming out of the border with people in cages and wrapped in little baked potato blankets is under Obama and under Biden. Correct. That didn't happen during Trump. Do you remember when they had the AFP, the big report that they did um, with some big human rights international group and they were like oh there's all these human rights violations at the border and everybody got all excited this was during the trump presidency yes, and yes. shared it and shared it and shared it and they were all stoked and then it turned out the report was from like 2014 yes of course and they then they pulled the whole article yes well, that was hilarious <laughs> yeah, we talked about that didn't we right of course we did we, it, it, we talked about it at the time i think but it was great because they all were like oh yes trump is doing all these humanitarian crimes at the border and then it turned out it was obama just like now it's biden of because course. their policies and this is the way democrats are is they're gonna kindness you right to death Oh, of course. They're going to kindness you into the holding cell at the border because mm -hmm. they're going to they have such a nice border policy that's so well-meaning that they're going to end up with kids in cages and kids drown in the Rio Grande and kids being abused in detention centers and all these other things. They because their policy is terrible. It's terrible for the people that it's supposed to help and it's terrible for everyone else. Absolutely. Alice, before you got to get going and drop him off and come back, um, mm -hmm. I just want to get to my favorite story of the day. I'm I am I shoe Massachusetts news these days, but this is a fantastic story. So Mayor Michelle Wu says this email really was just an honest mistake and by no means an attempt to divide the city council. She says the electeds of color is a group that meets all the time and this was just her year, her opportunity to host the holiday party. Oh, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. So what was the mistake? Sending it to the other people? Yes, the mistake was sending it to everyone. Right. So that's the mistake. I'm sorry so, about that. We didn't for those know. who don't know, this news story is that um, the Wu administration sent out an email inviting all the electeds of color to a special electeds of color holiday party. They, they're not apologizing for the fact that there's an electeds of color. In other words, a racist, no, no whites allowed party. <laughs> they're apologizing for the email. And I love this. A high ranking member of Michelle Wu's administration issued an apology. So the staffer has taken a hit on this. It's, it's so perfect. Here's the email that went out Tuesday afternoon from a Mayor Wu staffer. It said, I cordially invite you and a guest to the Electeds of Color holiday party. 15 minutes later, the same staffer sent this email saying it was sent to all members of the Boston City Council by mistake, saying I did send that to everyone by I'm sorry, everybody got the invite. Sorry, the white people, party. you weren't invited. Yeah. We didn't really so mean it, to invite you way, to the party. Is that, is that actually why she sent out the correction? Just mm -hmm. to say, oh, yeah, you can't come. 
Whites, you can't come. Just so you know, you I might mean, have gotten this I mean, it must invitation. be because otherwise, because otherwise, wouldn't you just say like, we welcome everybody to come celebrate our diversity council with this working group that meets because you know us people of color we get together and you know talk about being right. electeds of color, but you're all invited to our holiday party. So in other you words, know, this is just in case. Oh, sorry, so, that was a mistake. You're not invited. Yeah, because we don't <laughs> want whites to show up and we'll feel unsafe because this space right now is not for you. It's freaking fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Accident. I apologize if my email may have offended or came across as so. I apologize if my email came across as racist and segregationist. <laughs> they didn't want it to come across that way. We just want to make sure that only blacks get to this thing and no whites. We just want to make sure the whites stay away. Wednesday was the last Boston City Council meeting of the year. Meru was there to send off. What a gross bunch of people. It's just fantastic. Fantastic. And like every part of this. It, these people are, are just sick in the head. This, all this progressivism was ridiculous. Mayor Wu was one of the ones, or she was city councilor Wu then, who went after us at the Herald when we did a story about the government, uh, the state government charging Chinese food to people, to the taxpayer, and we put a picture of Chinese food on the on the splash of the Herald. And because they ordered Chinese food. Exa exactly. So it was a picture and, of Chinese food. Yes, and so Wu came out and said that we were racist, and she and Shirley <laughs> Leung, as a matter of fact, all said it was racist because we depicted Chinese food by using Chinese food. Okay, but that's where we are right now. Another great story of mine that I enjoy is, by the way, AOC still looking good. Absolutely pregnant, but still looking good. Why do you think she's pregnant? Absolutely. No this doubt. is not confirmed. No doubt. Spreading rumors. Um, hold on. No whites. Party is going to make a note. It's another great one here. Ticking off the uh, racist grifters. Former Facebook diversity manager, Barbara Furlow Smiles. Diversity manager and three last names. That's all you got to know. Three names. That's all you got to know. Barbara Furlow Smiles, who headed Facebook's diversity, diversity, equity, and inclusion DI programs, has pled guilty to a kickback scheme where she raked in $4 million. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I'm glad it happened. I think that's fantastic. You guys deserve it. According to the Department of Justice, Furlough Smiles used Facebook company credit cards to pay friends and family for goods and services never provided the company. Classic graph, grift. That's how you mm -hmm. do it. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. The friends and family members would then send the money back to her. Now that it's all cleaned up, laundered perfectly, she can cake the money. In a statement, U.S. Attorney Ryan Buchanan um, said furlough smiles abused a position of a trust as a global diversity executive for Facebook to defraud the company of millions. I um totally um endorse her for uh, president of Harvard College. I am. I think there's what, why not? What's the difference, really? Uh, DEI is a scam. Black Lives Matter is a grift. So, what do you you guys all? I mean, what are you supposed to do with company credit cards other than? You volunteered. Sure. She doesn't have anything else to do with the company right. other yeah. than use the company credit card to give herself money. I mean, she has no job. Yes. You head of diversity at Facebook, there's nothing to there's no reason to be. So, you know, you might as well charge up the company card. Yeah. <sighs> just like the BLM houses. Yeah. Why not? It's all just they're all just the same grift. Good news for you and your attempt to get in on a grift, honey. Um, Southwest Airlines has implemented a customers of size policy. Oh, um, that allows overweight flyers to purchase one seat and get another compliment. I love this. You just get one seat and you get another one free. I love this. I'm all for this. Finally, my people. Finally, my people get representation. So now you get two seats for the price of one, which is equity. By the way, is this um, it, does this have is this going to be ha result in the same thing as the Bud Light thing? Which now Republicans, some Republicans are caving in on. Um, I don't think so. I don't think. I think people don't like fat people. I am a fat person. I speak the language. Mm -hmm. I think people resent fat people, and especially really fat people. Yeah. And they're, if they're really, really fat people and they're taking two seats, I don't think people like that. And now mm -hmm. that they're going to be like taking, I, I think this is a bad move. Well, if you um if you click that article, you can hear um plus size TikToker. Travel influencer. I I'm right there right okay. now. I know her. I'm, well, I don't know her. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm familiar with her work, I guess I should say. Uh, hold on. Let me get this. Can you imagine? Like I know. Now you get two things for the price of one because you...
can't close the refrigerator. That's what happens. You've, you're being rewarded finally for your bad behavior the way you want to be. Sorry, this, this is not, this link is not working. I'm sorry about that. Video currently unavailable. Oh, no. Um, her name is Caroline what? What's her last name? Um, no, the one in the video is like Jasmine something, I think. Uh, if you're fat, you know the anxiety of flying, and this alleviates it a lot, said Caroline, a travel influencer who said she's a size 20, to her nearly 200,000 followers in a video posted at the end of October. I had a very comfortable flight, just feeling like I was allowed to take up the space I needed. Under the Texas-based airlines policy, customers whose bodies encroach past the armrest are entitled to an extra seat at no additional cost. It says that passengers have the option of purchasing just one seat and then discussing your seating needs with the customer service agent at the departure gate. So if the flight is fully booked, what happens? They kick somebody out so you get your extra fat seat? Yes. If it is determined that a second or third seat is needed, you'll be accommodated with a complimentary additional seat, the policy states. You have some work to do before you need three seats, honey. You are I want not, my you're not seats? there yet. The flight team will then look at the seating arrangements, which are not predetermined, and potentially move other passengers around for the accommodation. Oh, that's fantastic. Southwest, though, suggests that customers purchase the extra seats in advance and then contact the airline for a refund of the cost of the seating. Customers who encroach upon any part of the neighboring seats may proactively purchase the needed number of seats to ensure the seats are available. The purchase of additional seats serves as a notification of a special seating need and allows us to adequately plan for the number of occupied seats on board. So this is what I board. want. This is what I mm -hmm. want. You have to go. Yep, I do. Um, the, I want, my demand is this. Since I am a fat, I yes. want, not only I want two seats, but I want to be able to waddle off the plane first. I don't want to have to sit there with my head, you know, uh, cranked over, waiting for everybody to get off the plane. I want to be able to waddle off first. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I'd like to be carted through the airport. You know how some people somehow get carts? Yeah. I want to cart through the airport. I want, I want VIP fat service. Good. I think you should get VIP fat service. I actually think it's not that hard to get the wheelchairs at airports. I think it's fairly easy. Um, because I think a lot of people get them. Let me just switch the camera to you, and then I'm going to go take our son where he needs to go. And um, I will be right back. Okay, I'm trying to look for this video for Southwest Airlines, but I don't think I can really find, not the one I'm looking for anyway. Where is this? Come on. Come on, media. Um, But, yeah, no, this is, it, this is ridiculous. It is... I, I, you can't the, the problem with being fat is it's not an achievement it's it's a it's a result of self abuse and you cannot have self abuse being a a um rewarded behavior a, yes thank you else a rewarded behavior because you, you, those kind of values are no good for anybody no good for anybody so doing a, in so doing this stuff where you're putting people who aren't attractive generally, you know, in putting them on magazine covers, etc., it it nobody's buying it. It's just more make pretend. Nobody's buying it. There is generally there are obviously there are um, different tastes, etc., but there is a beauty standard. Standard. There is a beauty standard, and a lot of these people just simply don't fall into it, and that's too bad. But we should also be having, um, we should also be dissuading, dissuading um, this kind of, these kind of behaviors. I mean, just stop it. Stop it with the, with the fat acceptance stuff. It's not good for anybody. It's unhealthy. And it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And you're also, if you're somebody who's like, this lady seems to be in her 20s, like 24 or whatever. And, oh, and, um, you know, really, really, really that fat then it, the, society shouldn't be accommodating you um, into into uh, acceptance and, you know, in normalizing you. They should be urging you, pressuring you to get better. So you're not that fat. And I mean, this is, uh, what are you going to say? Fat people are unhealthier. It's just a thing. It is. And I am a fat, currently I'm less fat than I used to be. There's no doubt about that. And that's a huge difference. Just being... Going from that fat to this fat, the difference. But I want to go from this fat to much even less fat. 
I don't technically even want to be fat. Although I'd have to give giving up all the behaviors it takes to not be fat. Ooh, that's a tough one. So I might have to be a little fat. But come on. Like, be reasonable here. And th this, you, you can't, once again, we just can't have a, you can't have a civilization when we're playing make-believe, make-pretend. Which brings me to the New York Post senior high schooler marked incorrect on quiz for saying only women can be pregnant. <sighs> Once again, making pretend, but this is the time of making pretend. And it is no bueno. No bueno. No bueno whatsoever. By the way, if, if I, I have a Santa suit, which I'm wearing currently. Not all of it, but I have never worn a Santa suit before. We actually found one. I just we actually found one because I'm going to a function uh, as Santa soon, uh, in the next few days. And this is the most comfortable thing I've ever worn. This is like ridiculous. Every part of it is really comfortable. I love this. If they if I could get away with it, if they could make it more generic, I would wear this every day. Even the hat is comfortable. Every part of it is comfortable. I'm all for. I'm I am big on Santa suits. Now. Uh, what else did I have here before we get to the chat chat? Uh, homelessness. Claudine Gay is a distinguished scholar. We talked about that yesterday. Um, let's see. Oh, my goodness. There's a tw tweet from Marshall Haas. Uh, says, no more kids for me. My wife had the jokes when I got home from the doctor today. He just got snipped. She had these jokes. So she's got all these grocery items. Um, that she has on the kitchen table, like uh, crunch berries. Your berries got crunched, she says. Uh, donuts. She wrote a, a little ta post-it note says no nuts. Um, no more sour patch kids say no more kids. Uh, Swedish fish says so long swimmers. Uh, then she's got a pie for him. Something snip snip hooray. This dude is absolutely like the most cuck thing in the world it's like actually that's what else wrote too it's like really that's right honey i just uh, i just castrated myself that's right yeah you make jokes about me whatever i mean i understand here that um that i have 183 kids but you know calm down calm down with that let's see um okay uh, you, by the way, I'm trying to to um, trying to book a woman who got a thousand dollar tip. She really seems cool. Um, and her, uh, she's from around here, as a matter of fact. But her name is uh, Izzy Rydebach, and she is a single mom with two jobs. Really kind of cool story, and she got a thousand dollar tip. We talked about it a little bit on the on the All You Can Eat podcast this morning. As somebody who was in a tip position, a big tip, I've never got, I never got a thousand bucks. I got a hundred a couple of times, uh, and maybe possibly, possibly a little bit more. And we get, you know, kind of a kiss in the mail, so to speak, from some restaurants. Uh, not shockingly, uh, mostly Italian restaurants, uh, but not, not, not it. But I never got that much. But those tips, when you're, when you're getting tips, it is all the difference. It can just make or break you, if, especially if you're like squeezing by she's a single mom so she's got a kid which means she works during the day as a dental hygienist and then at night um doing the waitress thing so you've got to get child care for that stuff that's hugely expensive hugely expensive it is it just costs a lot of money and it can it, it, there are times when it can be everything it can be absolutely um everything it, it can take everything to try to get that to try to get to manage a uh, life like that. But yeah. In if we get her that'll be great. Hopefully we can talk to her maybe Sunday and have it for Monday. I'm also going to get the stars of uh Lady Ballers on, at least one of them. And uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's the thing by the Daily Wire about guys playing women's sports as if that could ever happen. So, but I'll get that and we'll have one of those guys on as well. All right, should we do the Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce Hotline? How, many, how long? How deep into this show are we actually? How late? We're only twenty nine minutes in there. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe it's too early. Well, so then let me ask you this. Let me talk talk to you about something that Alice and I were talking about today. What do you think about 
having uh, Nikki Haley be Trump's running mate. Now, I'm not a Nikki guy, and Alice is not a Nikki guy either. But there are a lot of people who, and Tim and Kate called about this today, I mentioned on the radio, there are a lot of people who, a lot of disaffected Republicans who say, who love her. They love her. They're huge into her. The commentary magazine people have been pushing and pushing and pushing. The dispatch people love her. People love her. They call her affectionately Nikki. They love her. And there's a lot of Republicans who, who are just down on Trump but appreciated that the policies worked, who maybe could say, okay, if I do this and do it for Nikki, instead of Trump, then I'm willing to let that happen. It reminds me, as a matter of fact, reminds me of 1996, me and my friend, no, okay, this is when I get falsely accused of groping somebody, which did not happen. I think this girl's name was Michelle. I've mentioned this before. A whole bunch of us were all like big friends of ours, we worked at a hotel, we're drinking at a bar, an Irish bar, great Irish bar. I think it's closed now, called the Field in Central Square in Cambridge. And we were in a big, almost we were like drinking and swaying together in a big. Uh, it's almost like a scrum. And while we're doing this, we're all holding on to each other. With this girl Michelle, who was kind of attractive, wore too much makeup. I think I, I forgot, but. Uh, she was probably like 25, whatever. We were all 23 or whatever. Some At the end of the, the like song or whatever, I could tell like she's like talking to some other people in our group like in ticked off at me. And she said, you effing grabbed my breast. You effing grabbed my boob. And I, was like, and I said, no, I didn't. And by the way, I didn't. I would remember that. I would tell you now if I did. First of all, it's, that is not a Tom Shatter kind of thing to, to try to get away with. It, no way was... You know, I had ne would never have had the cojones to just grab somebody's bread. So I didn't grab anything. I didn't touch her whatsoever. At all, ever. Which is ridiculous, because I get the... I'm blamed for it. I did not. You're a liar, Michelle. Screw you, dude. You, you're, you were, you're not pretty, okay? You weren't then, okay, dickhead? But here's the other thing, is... So there's obviously some guy in that group who did, who knows that I got blamed, who's just thrilled, because he did get to cop a feel, uh, you know, and so he'll have that in his memory. Meanwhile, all I have is a false indictment. So anyway, what reminds me of the split ticket and going for Trump, she later um, she later started hooking up with my friend Keith. Who, uh, well, no, wait, man, I shouldn't. This is, yeah. She uh, developed an affection for Keith. So one time Keith came to one of my, uh, our shows for our rock band, Lemur, it was called. It was before lemurs were a thing. But she came, and she was there with Keith. And I said, wow, hey, Michelle, thanks so much for coming. She said, I'm not here for you. I'm here because Keith was coming. I'm like, wow, you jerk. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that maybe voters will vote for Nikki Haley because they're not, they're not here. They're not going voting for the Trump-Haley ticket for Trump. They're here because Nikki's here. And that's the way it can be. It can be the lesson of Michelle from the field grope i don't think i i there's no way i never out at, at any kind of bar or or anything i was not a cop a field type of guy on anybody who was not my girlfriend N not no nope. i know guys who have been and i've seen them in action some of them are very or were very daring about it like, these guys are all in their 50s now um and some of them like got away with it and i would never i wouldn't even never even gotten away with it I have like a creep energy, I think, that allows me not to get away from stuff that that, that other guys can get away with. And I'm aware, I see it sometimes, even now, like I'm walking around on the streets, I'm like, I don't think that people think I'm normal. But for instance, my friend used to say this joke. This is very 90s, very guy thing to say when you're like 21 years old. He used to say, um, he, he said this joke once, he's he probably watching right now. This is to all the front desk girls when we worked at the Marriott Hotel. He said, uh, the joke went something like this. Um, yeah, I, I'm having trouble when I'm having sex these days. Um, it's kind of painful. And the, so one of the girls would obviously say, oh, wh why? And he said, oh, I think it's the um, the mace. So you get it, okay? Much more acceptable kind of joke in the 90s. I tried the same joke with even some of the same people in not a, not a peep, not, no laughter, 
that is a joke about rape, Tom. That is not funny. That is sexual assault. That is disgusting. Like people like getting upset and hugging each other. It's like I brought the room to a total halt. I don't have it. I don't have it. There was one time with the same guy, as a matter of fact, we were in this uh, walking path. This, I, was, I had a brief window when I was 31 of being good looking and not fat, as a matter of fact. And this group of girls um, saw me. I was walking past the, past the, past the, past this bar and it had like an open, open windows, et cetera. And these girls, these group of attractive Chicago girls who always liked me more than women up here, um, Wave me, can you say, come here, come on over, come on over. And I went over to them, and within 11 seconds, they were like, can you, can you just go? And I was like, yep, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I had, as a single guy, I was, I was admitting, there was something. I'm not a serial killer, and I, there's no, and I've, you know, I have not, I am not a harmful to women person. It just has never happened. But I, ha I don't know what it is. It, I don't know what it is, but it has it's it's off now. I mean, I've had always had girlfriends in my life, so it's not everybody, but some. T but some. I just don't. I I just don't have it. But the only, the only cure for this. Well, here it goes. This is why they probably think this because I'm so shallow. So when we first had Sally, I remember going to the Copley Mall with her. Well, she was uh, not when we first had her, but like when she was like uh, I don't know a year or whatever, uh, two years. I don't know, but she was little. She was very, little. and I would carry her on my shoulders, and. Or a backpack that we had, but her head would stick over my head, and and these beautiful women at the Copley Mall would look at me and smile. And the only reason they were smiling because they were really looking at her. But as far as I was concerned, I stole it. I stole the smile as being for me, but it wasn't. So that like, what would make somebody do that? And like keep walking around and enjoying the smiles because these women otherwise would be very cold to me because they get an energy from me and I'm not like Brad Pitt, believe it or not. Um, that, that there was no, they wouldn't be melting like this. But since I had a baby on my shoulder, they would melt, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. So I think the fact that I enjoyed that shows you there's something in my DNA that might be fundamentally mildly creepy. Could be, could be. It, which, by the way, doesn't always hurt. There are sometimes in there. Remember one time in them. In the Beacon Hill pub, um, there was a young lady in Dai who would we'd make eye contact. She was quite pretty, um, but I, of course, had no, I had no cojones at, at all to approach her. And if I did, I wouldn't have had anything to actually say, and I would have probably made something up that wasn't believable. I was, I had no game, no game. As a, as a, believe it or not, and this is like when I was thirty, but so, um, she actually approached me. After at the bar, I used to see her there just about every night. We used to live, you know, a hundred feet from there. So she eventually came over to me and she said, "You know, um, my friends have told me not to do this because, like, they consider you like ultra creepy. But I just wanted to come over here and like um, see, talk to you, and see what you're up to." And she ended up liking me, and we ended up dating, I guess you could say, um, for a little bit of uh, time. So sometimes it can work out for you. But this has been don't tell Alice any of this stuff. This is between us. But sometimes, um, yeah, so now it's easy. Now, you know, I'm married. My wife's attractive and, um, and nice and does a lot of stuff now. So I can, I'm more contained. I Well, I think so. Although we do talk about other women. But I'm, I'm a male human being, right? And I'm allowed to. It's not against the rules. If she shut it off, then it would be shut off, and I would never do that again. I think it's time for the Chelsea Wicked Fire, <laughs> Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce. So we got to get some more Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce. I, I have so much outreach to do, Alice. You have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so much outreach to do. Um, okay. <gasps> oh, see this? And I'm still a fat. You know why? Because... By the way, I am in my Travis Matthew hoodie, which is like the softest thing I've ever owned. And it's perfect. Yes. Can you... The, the description's over there. Can you read about it? And... It's this... It's that right there. Friend of ours. This is the uh, Heather Navy in the Women's Cloud Zip hoodie. Are you going to thank our friend? And um, thank you to our friend. Does it say his name on it here? It says Steve his name. Show Steve. That's exactly. Is that really his name? Steve Show. Steve Show is his last name. It's not like. Okay. No, I think it's his name. Oh, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have given his full name. Anyway, anyway, it's our okay. friend Steve. Uh, and, our and friend he... Steve at Travis Matthew, and he's awesome. And as a matter of fact, Alice, 
I, let me show you something. Here's an exclusive for you. Mm -hmm. This. Oh, wait. Is this not it? Is it? Is this one of my Travis Matthew t-shirts? I can't tell under your cute Santa outfit. The t-shirts, I, I complained that there, I didn't have any great t-shirts ever since my um, ex had cheated on me with somebody who left his t-shirt. That, <laughs> that was your favorite t-shirt? Yeah, that was my favorite. So he sent these over from Travis Matthew. And these are just fantastic. The Travis, comments in this chat, my goodness, I missed a lot. Travis huh? Matthew stuff, the, these clothes are fit. Alice, pour it on a little bit more with this Travis Matthew stuff here. This is the best thing I've ever owned. And it's so cute. It's soft. And um, I have a matching one with Sally Shattuck now. We're twins, which... She likes the sweatshirt so much she's willing to be twins with me, which is huge because she normally would not yes. be caught and dead looking the same as me. Alice bounced in here, and she was so happy with her Travis Matthew um, cloud, what's it called? Cloud hoodie, hoodie women's cloud zip um, hoodie. That she said, this color looks so good on me. <laughs> wow. This color does look good on me. But that's great. You. Steve, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. All right, Alice. What is the uh, hot sauce? That is the Chelsea Fire Wicked hot Are sauce. Are there any messages there you should be talking about? In the chat? Yeah, anything that we should... Um, let's oh. see. Uh, something, some stuff about Nikki Haley. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I asked if people wanted her to be Trump's... Uh, searching all flip phones from the 90s looking for proof. Proof of what? Which I don't know what exactly. that means. I'm confused. Oh, okay. oh, is this... Okay, is this the... the... When Trump drops uh, Nikki Haley star four wars in the first 48 hours... <laughs> That's probably her right. Reign, That's isn't prob her real name Dick Cheney? <laughs> That's probably um, right. Halliburton Halley, Haley. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tom confessed to multiple crimes tonight. Groping, <laughs> serial murder. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Tom stopped by maybe asked to testify. <laughs> Every time we lose Alice, Burn Barrel turns into a therapy session... <laughs> I had told them about the false accusation I got about groping a woman in the field uh -huh. bar, which I never did. I just simply never did that. I would, at this point, tell people. But you can get me on a lot of things, but having the tenacity. <laughs> you wish you had groped somebody, would, but you didn't. You I wish you were well, brave enough. I wish I was brave enough. I, I still don't want to do it, but I was not. Yeah. Anybody who knows me from those days as well, and there may be some listening. Um, knows that you pretty much, yeah, I wasn't that, I wasn't that guy. Hey, what's up, buddy? You want to get the ornaments? We're leaving in like five minutes. We are? Yeah. Oh, when's it start? 7.30? 7.30. Oh, dang, we got to do the... That's what I'm saying. Okay, let's go. Let's go. What are the chances that Joe Biden actually read that letter? And what are the chances that a letter was actually written? Because that, to me, was the most fakest, video that i could ever imagine i mean these people are great candidates for general hospital i mean this is just awful i know i know that but yes what was the letter the letter that so they had originally sent a letter supposedly and that's why he called them oh that's right that's right Tanya thanking Chad. him personally for paying off their loans so they could pay off their house and live large on the rest of our diet that's right congrats that's right. to tanya and chad oh. Hey, what's going on? This is Chad, and over Whoa. here's Tanya. Whoa. We've been uh, waiting uh, for you for that sex uh, since you wanted to sign. <laughs> anyway, he did. Uh, Tom thanks Shattuck for helping pay it off. What? What did I say? You said that you got to sleep with Tanya now because oh. you're, <laughs> you're <laughs> part of right. the family now. That's right. Oh, you... pay, yeah, I'm, I'm the spouse now. My uh, student loans and everything, and it was great to hear from Mr. Biden. You know, everything's oh, great. Uh, anyway... Anytime you want to swing by, you know, Tanya's a freak. I'm just telling you. And I'm mostly a top myself. Oh, but, my goodness. You know, we'll see what happens when you get here. Oh, my goodness. All right. No, she actually reminds me Bye. of the lady who brought puppies over to my trailer in Tennessee. <laughs> Oosh. Ask and you shall receive, Alice. The Italian thin pancakes are called crispedly. Ooh. And that's our version of a crepe, Makes and total we usually sense. fill it with like Nutella. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you put ricotta in there, so it's a very, very amazingly delicious delicacy in Italy. Thanks. Ooh, all sounds Makes good. Makes total sense. All sounds good. 
the thing about artificial intelligence is it's just like it's just not yet there yet it's almost there yeah not quite it's not there mm-hmm. it and, will get uh, there i agree mostly with alice on the subject you know it's just it's just it's just bad to have uh like your your daughters be manipulated like that with artificial intelligence and the like porn scenes and whatnot um another thing is um I think it would be quite hilarious if somebody like put Tom and an, uh, an AI thing on like a, a scene from Black dot com or something. I don't even I don't know what that is. Replace yeah. him with uh, with uh, like Brandy Love or Lauren Phillips or somebody like that. That'd be <laughs> He's ridiculous. Me. It'd be like guys just you know messing around with each other, like how how guys are. You know, yes. they just give each other yes. crap if, if they're gonna how, build anything with anybody like that you know make it something that tom might enjoy consuming um all right i hate to agree with the caller but it has been probably more than a month since i've heard a voicemail on the all you can eat pod i mean it's yep, getting yep. we corrected that this morning remedy today remedy yes. today we have gotten thank better. you we owed you guys yes it's true we will get better with that dedicate a whole episode to just playing and responding to messages i well, mean i think we only had two. Oh. Oh. well there goes that <laughs> okay hold on let me see if i can get this going <laughs> Hey, Tom and okay. Alice. We'll uh, this one's for the all you can eat. Oh, all you can eat. Okay, so that's that. Alby, get back to your station. I'm back. I'm You're needed back. in just a moment. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready for what's about yes. to happen? Are you ready for what's about I'm to happen? I'm so ready. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We have to go to an elementary school band concert, which is super fun. Um, We will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Thanks to everyone in the live chat. If you want to join to watch the live stream and chat and stuff like that, that's at patreon.com slash burn barrel. Of course, you can always watch and listen to the show for free. If you go to burnbarrelpodcast.com, there's a merch store. There's links to all the different places to listen. You can watch on YouTube, on Rumble, etc. After it's up.